I never imagined my search for a place to stay would lead me down such a twisted path. It all began innocently enough, with me scrolling through listings online, hoping to find a cheap and cozy place to crash for the night. Little did I know that my quest for comfort would soon turn into a harrowing descent into a nightmarish abyss. The ad that caught my eye seemed almost too good to be true. A charming cottage nestled deep in the woods, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. The picture showcased a picturesque exterior and a warm, inviting interior with a roaring fireplace. The price was unbelievably low, and curiosity got the best of me. I reached out to the owner who responded promptly, offering me a special deal for a last-minute booking. It seemed like fate had smiled upon me, or so I thought. As I drove deeper into the forest, the towering trees seemed to swallow up the sunlight, casting ominous shadows over the winding, narrow road. The GPS struggled to maintain a signal, and my phone's battery was rapidly dwindling. A sense of unease crept over me, but I dismissed it as mere nerves, a result of the isolation. The cottage finally came into view, and for a moment, it looked just as enchanting as the photos had suggested. But as I stepped out of my car and approached the front door, a shiver ran down my spine. The air grew colder, the rustling leaves seemed to whisper ominous secrets, and the cottage itself appeared more decrepit than I had anticipated. Inside, the atmosphere was suffocating. The air was stale, and the smell of dampness hung heavy. The fireplace was nothing more than a charred pit of ashes. Cobwebs clung to the corners of the room, and dust covered every surface. This was nothing like the cozy retreat I had envisioned. As night fell, I tried to settle in, but the cottage seemed to come alive with eerie sounds. Strange, muffled footsteps echoed from the attic, and the creaking of the wooden floors sounded like the murmurs of ghostly voices. Every time I thought I heard someone, or something, moving in the shadows, there was nothing there. Desperation took hold, and I decided to investigate the attic. The narrow staircase spiraled upwards into darkness, and my flashlight barely pierced the gloom. As I reached the top, the beam of light revealed a series of grotesque paintings on the walls. Distorted faces and contorted figures stared back at me, their eyes seeming to follow my every move. It was as if I had stumbled upon a gallery of madness. Then I heard it, the unmistakable sound of a child's laughter. My heart pounded in my chest as I followed the sound to a small, hidden room at the end of the attic. Inside, I found a tattered journal and a weathered, blood-stained doll. The journal's pages were filled with the ramblings of someone driven to madness, and the doll seemed to radiate malevolence. With trembling hands, I began to read the journal. The entries detailed dark rituals, unspeakable acts, and the summoning of entities from beyond the veil of reality. It was a descent into madness and I couldn't tear my eyes away from the horrifying words scrawled across the pages. As I read, the laughter grew louder, echoing through the attic. I turned to leave, but the door slammed shut, trapping me in that nightmarish room. The walls seemed to close in around me, and I felt a presence, something ancient and malevolent, lurking in the darkness. In that moment, I knew I had unwittingly stumbled into a place where the line between the living and the dead had blurred where unspeakable horrors had been unleashed. My only thought was to escape, to flee from that accursed cottage, and to leave the darkness behind. As I write this, I am far from that accursed place, but the memories of that night still haunt me. I can't help but wonder if the cottage was a mere portal to a realm of nightmares, or if it was something far more sinister, a place that should never have been found. One thing is certain, though, I will never forget the night I ventured into that nightmarish abyss, and I pray that no one else ever finds their way there. They say curiosity killed the cat, but in my case, it led me to a vacation rental that would haunt my nightmares for years to come. It was a quaint little cottage listed on Craigslist nestled deep in the woods, far from the prying eyes of civilization. The photos showed a picturesque getaway but nothing could have prepared me for the horrors that awaited me in that forsaken place. The drive to the cottage was an adventure in itself, a winding journey through dense, ancient forests that swallowed up the road. My GPS lost signal, and the sense of isolation grew with every mile. A feeling of unease settled in the pit of my stomach, 
but I brushed it off as pre-trip jitters. When I finally arrived, the cottage was a far cry from the idyllic retreat I'd envisioned. It stood alone amidst towering trees, its time-worn facade revealing years of neglect. The paint was peeling, and the windows were dark and foreboding. But I was determined to make the most of it, to find beauty in the imperfections. As night descended, I lit a fire in the decrepit fireplace and settled in for the evening. That's when the unsettling occurrences began. Shadows danced on the walls, their movements disjointed and unnatural. Whispers echoed through the cottage, unintelligible and filled with malice. I told myself it was just my imagination, that I was letting the isolation get to me. But then came the footsteps, ominous and deliberate, as if someone were pacing just outside my door. I ventured out, my heart pounding, but there was no one to be seen. I dismissed it as an overactive imagination and returned to the fire. As the hours passed, the cabin seemed to come alive with malevolence. Objects moved of their own accord, and the temperature plummeted to bone-chilling levels. My phone, my only link to the outside world, refused to charge, leaving me truly isolated. It was then that I discovered the hidden cellar door beneath a threadbare rug. The steps spiraled down into darkness, and an overpowering stench wafted up from below. I descended into that abyss, my curiosity outweighing my fear. In the dim light of my flashlight, I found a room filled with cryptic symbols and macabre artwork. The walls were adorned with grotesque paintings, each one more nightmarish than the last. In the center of the room lay a sinister-looking tome, its pages filled with incantations and rituals. As I flipped through the pages, I heard a voice, an otherworldly whisper that sent shivers down my spine. It spoke of an ancient evil bound to the cottage, a malevolent force that fed on the souls of those who entered its domain. I had unwittingly unlocked its presence, and now it hungered for me. I flood the cellar, my heart pounding in my chest, but the cottage had become a labyrinth of shifting walls and endless corridors. It was as if the very structure had turned against me, leading me deeper into its nightmarish heart. I fought to maintain my sanity, desperately searching for an escape. It was a battle of wills, a struggle against a malevolent entity determined to claim my soul. But in the end, I emerged from that cursed cottage, battered and broken, but alive. As I drove away, I could see the cabin in my rearview mirror, its dark silhouette disappearing into the woods. I had survived the horrors that lurked within, but I knew that the darkness would never truly fade. It would wait patiently for its next victim, luring them in with the promise of a peaceful retreat only to unleash unimaginable horrors behind closed doors. I've always been a sucker for adventure, and when I stumbled upon a mysterious invitation to a remote mountain lodge, I couldn't resist. The ad had an air of enigma, promising breathtaking views and unparalleled solitude. It was the perfect escape from the daily grind. The journey was a long and winding one, a seemingly endless drive through rugged terrain. Cell phone signal faded away, and the world outside grew more desolate with each passing mile. Doubt began to gnaw at me, but the promise of seclusion and tranquility kept me going. Finally, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I arrived at the lodge. It stood isolated at the edge of a vast forest, an imposing structure with its dark wood and heavy, iron-studded door. A chill ran down my spine as I approached. It felt as if the very air around me had thickened with an unspoken dread. I entered, and the door slammed shut behind me with a deafening thud. The interior was grand but archaic, a mixture of opulence and decay. Tattered curtains swayed in the draft, and the paintings on the walls seemed to depict scenes of suffering and despair. A single candle flickered on the table, casting eerie shadows that danced across the room. The lodge's only occupant, a gaunt man in tattered clothing, emerged from the darkness. He introduced himself as the caretaker and explained that I was the only guest. His eyes, hollow and lifeless, sent shivers down my spine. Despite my reservations, I followed him to my room. As the hours passed, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The lodge seemed to have a mind of its own, with doors creaking open and shut and whispers echoing down the hallways. 
My unease grew with each passing moment, but I convinced myself it was just my imagination. Night fell, and I settled into the ornate four-poster bed. Sleep eluded me, however, as strange sounds filled the lodge. Distant cries and muffled footsteps echoed through the corridors. I ventured out of my room, only to be greeted by a surreal sight. The hallway had transformed into a labyrinth of shifting walls and endless doorways. Panic set in as I realized I was trapped in a maze that defied logic and reason. The very architecture of the lodge seemed to taunt me, leading me deeper into its nightmarish heart. In my desperate search for an escape, I stumbled upon a room unlike any other. Inside, an ancient tome lay open on a pedestal, its pages filled with cryptic symbols and incantations. A voice whispered in my mind, urging me to recite the words. With a sense of dread, I complied. The room quaked, and a gaping maw opened in the floor, revealing a bottomless abyss. Terrifying creatures emerged, their forms shifting and nightmarish. They dragged me toward the abyss, their grip is sea and insistent. In that moment of despair, I fought back, clawing my way free from their grasp. I raced through the shifting corridors, praying for an exit. Eventually, I burst through the lodge's front door, collapsing onto the ground outside. The lodge, with its malevolent intent, disappeared into the mountains, leaving me shaken and scarred but alive. I watched it vanish, vowing to never speak of the horrors I had witnessed. To this day, I wonder about the lodge and the sinister forces that lurked within its walls. It was a place of nightmares, a realm where reality and the supernatural converged, a place that should have remained hidden from the world. My only hope is that no one else stumbles upon that cursed mountain lodge, for I fear the darkness it contains may never truly fade. The listing on the internet promised an idyllic escape from the hustle and bustle of city life. An old Victorian mansion nestled deep in the countryside. With its towering spires and intricate wrought iron gates, it looked like something out of a dream. But from the moment I set foot inside that foreboding place, I knew I had made a terrible mistake. The mansion's grandeur quickly gave way to a suffocating atmosphere of dread. The air was frigid, and an unsettling silence hung like a pall, broken only by the distant cawing of crows. My heart raced as I realized that I was entirely alone in this cavernous, echoing house. As the days turned into a harrowing eternity, strange things began to happen. Whispers echoed through the empty halls, secrets murmured by voices that seemed to come from the very walls themselves. Shadows moved of their own accord, taking on unnatural shapes and forms that danced in the periphery of my vision. One night, I ventured into the mansion's dark and labyrinthine basement. I should have known better, but an irresistible compulsion drew me deeper into the abyss. The air grew heavy with the stench of decay, and the flickering light of my flashlight revealed an altar adorned with cryptic symbols and dried blood. My heart pounded in my chest as I realized the mansion's sinister history. It had been a haven for a secret society, one that dabbled in the darkest of occult rituals. The walls of the basement were lined with photographs. Guests who had stayed here before me their faces twisted in terror as they succumbed to unspeakable horrors. The realization hit me like a sledgehammer. I wasn't alone in that mansion. I was trapped with the malevolent spirits of those who had met their grisly fates within its walls. The whispers grew louder, the shadows more sinister, and I knew they hungered for my soul. Desperation clawed at my mind as I searched for an escape, but the mansion seemed determined to hold me prisoner. Doors that led to nowhere, staircases that descended into darkness, and windows that revealed only endless voids. It was as if the very architecture of the house conspired against me. One fateful night, as the darkness closed in around me, I found myself drawn to the altar in the basement. The sinister symbols seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, and the voices in my head urged me to complete the ritual, to offer up my soul to the darkness. I resisted with every ounce of my being, but the mansion's grip was unrelenting. The ritual reached its horrifying climax, and I felt a searing pain as my soul was torn from my body. I watched in helpless terror as my own life force was consumed by the mansion's insatiable hunger. Now I am but a wraith, trapped within the cursed walls of the mansion, 
forever tormented by the malevolent spirits that dwell here. I write this as a warning to those who may come across that accursed listing on the internet. Beware the Grand Victorian Mansion, for behind its elegant facade lies a nightmarish abyss from which there is no escape. My heart pounded like a drum as I stepped into the quaint cabin I'd found on the internet. The online listing had promised a peaceful retreat in the remote woods, but as I crossed the threshold, I felt a coldness in the air that sent a shiver down my spine. Little did I know that my vacation would soon become a descent into a nightmarish hell. The cabin was a relic from a bygone era, its wood paneled walls and antique furniture adding to its eerie charm. I had always been drawn to the macabre, so the idea of staying in a place with a hint of history and mystery was irresistible. However, the unease I felt grew with each passing hour. It began with subtle disturbances, a flickering light, an inexplicable draft, and the unsettling sensation of being watched. I chalked it up to my overactive imagination, a product of too many horror novels and late night movies. But as the days passed, the disturbances escalated. Late one night, as I lay in bed, the creaking of the floorboards outside my room pulled me from my uneasy slumber. I froze in terror as the doorknob turned slowly and the door swung open with a low, agonized groan. There in the dim moonlight, stood a figure shrouded in darkness, its eyes gleaming with malevolence. I screamed and scrambled to turn on the lights, but when they flickered to life, the figure had vanished into thin air. My heart raced, and I questioned my own sanity. Had I imagined it all? Was the isolation of the cabin playing tricks on my mind? As days turned into weeks, I became consumed by a growing dread that something sinister lurked within the cabin's walls. Shadows seemed to move of their own accord, and strange symbols appeared etched into the wooden beams. I delved into the cabin's history, uncovering tales of disappearances and mysterious deaths that spanned decades. One evening, as I explored the cabin's attic, I stumbled upon a hidden room. Inside, I found a collection of journals that detailed the experiences of previous guests. Their entries spoke of voices in the night, of doors that opened on their own, and of a malevolent presence that tormented them until they fled in terror. The final entry, written in trembling handwriting, warned of a ritual that could summon unspeakable horrors from the depths of the cabin. It was a ritual that had been performed by a desperate soul, hoping to escape the relentless torment. The details were chilling, and I realized that I had to confront the darkness that had taken hold of the cabin. That night, I gathered the materials described in the journal and performed the ritual. The air grew heavy, and the cabin seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. I faced the entity head-on, challenging it to reveal itself. A darkness emerged, a formless mass of malevolence that whispered promises of suffering and torment. But I stood my ground, and with a final incantation, I banished the entity back into the abyss from which it came. The cabin, once a place of unspeakable horror, returned to a semblance of normalcy. I left vowing never to return, but haunted by the knowledge that the darkness still lurked out there, waiting for its next unsuspecting victim. As I drove away from that accursed cabin, I couldn't help but wonder how many other vacationers had fallen prey to the malevolent forces that dwelled within cabin's hidden corners. My only advice to others, beware the listings that promise an unforgettable getaway, for you may find yourself trapped in a nightmare from which there is no escape.